Hi everyone. I am here today with Chris Lang from Arch Forensic and we're going to be discussing electric vehicle charging stations. And this is a hot topic um, in New York and New Jersey, Pennsylvania and the rest of the country. Uh, in New York specifically, there's been a uh, law passed and some mandates that the um, by 2035, 100% of new cars sold are going to have to have zero emissions, which means they're going to have to be electric vehicles. In addition, there are multiple uh, tax incentives for uh, people, for, excuse me, for building owners to install electric vehicle charging stations. And in addition, there's incentives for people to, uh, tax incentives for people who purchase or lease um, electric vehicles. So, you know, this is the future. This is where things are going. And I think if you're a building owner, or a uh, homeowners association or a condominium association in New York, you, you need to stay on top of this and, uh, you know, be ready for the future. So, uh, Chris, welcome. And if you could just please tell us a little bit about uh, your company, that would be great place to start. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good to be here. Uh, Chris Ling, um, Arch Forensic is the company. Uh, we concentrate on, on condos uh, mostly, and we work in the New York, New Jersey, and and Pennsylvania area. We've been around for a while. We've been doing some feasibility studies on um, a lot of buildings. Uh, people want to get proactive and stay ahead of this. They know it's coming. Uh, there are mandates in different states. Uh, more states, more and more states are mandating uh, electric vehicle usage and, and sales. Um, so we we get hired to uh, to help out the buildings, uh, kind of proactively uh, plan, you know, how this will be implemented. Since this is sort of a, a, a new, you know, sort of technology, and, and you know, not everyone, everyone eventually is going to have an electric vehicle, but currently not everyone does. Can you just like tell us like the the basics on on like charging stations? Because I think a lot of people, you know, if you do, especially if you have a, a gas powered car, you you may not even understand sort of the, the logistics of it. Could you just explain? Um, the basics of charging stations. Yeah, so the charging stations, there's uh, three basic ones, type one, type two, type three. Uh, type one is the kind you would you plug into a regular outlet in your garage and, and plug it into your car. Uh, that's the, the cheapest to, to buy, uh, easiest to install. Um, it also takes the longest to charge your vehicle. Um, then there's a type two, which uh, will charge your vehicle quicker um, it's bigger. It's a 220 volt plug into a special plug, either in your garage or on a post outside by your parking spot. And then there's level three, which is a commercial, uh, commercial grade uh, charger, which uh, you might see at you know gas stations, and th that would be for public use. In your experience, like in let's say a parking garage, let's say a building owner, a landlord, commercial landlord. I would imagine they would get a commercial application, but let's say in a in a HOA like townhouse development or a condominium um, development, do you think you know which, which level charger do you think they most commonly in, install? If if you know, well, depending on where you are. Um, so inside of your own garage in, in a townhome type situation, um, you'd have a level one or a level two uh, likely. Um, level two uh, can be put outside on a post. So you wouldn't see a level one outside. Uh, level two now has the ability to lock out from other people using your charger. So if you have an out outdoor parking spot and you have a level two charger there, um, that'll be your dedicated charger um, and you can lock it out if somebody else tries to plug in and tries to, tries to use your charger. Level three is the ones you'll, you'll see most often outside. And you can choose even if um, you're an association or a building owner uh, that has dedicated spots, you can choose to put in a, a a commercial grade level three charger. And then with respect to these different kinds of installations, um, you know, what, what are some other considerations like location, like where, where would, and I guess that would also depend on, on the building type. So maybe, maybe that's, maybe you answer that together is, is, you know, where, where would you install one of these applications? And well, let's say for the different building types, like, um, you know, multifamily versus, um, you know, uh, townhouse de development. Yeah, you want to consider the different types of parking situations. So if someone's in a condo that has townhomes, you know, that's your own dedicated garage connected to your unit. Um, you know, that would be a probably type one, type two charger that would be inside the, uh, the unit. If, uh, 
if you have out, outdoor parking, then you can consider the type two and type three. Um, you might want to also consider where that parking is located. Um, is it near a building? Um, can you separate it from the building and can you separate the, the vehicle charging from each other um, as a safety precaution? Let the, the commercial grade, uh, you know, type three um, is a very good option because it, you can uh, make money back, right? So you can actually uh, charge uh, their, their uh, it's like you're a gas station. So people come and fill up on their credit card and, and, and the, the owner of the building, you know, gets the money from that and they can mark it up, you know, uh, to help pay for the charger installation so that they can break even on that or, or make money if they, they choose to. Right. So I think you, you had mentioned that the, the, the level one, and level two, you know, you're talking about a, a 120 or a 220. So just overall though, what do you think, or I guess from a, uh, owner's perspective, uh, you know, you mentioned there's ways to monetize it. You know, are these applications a big drain on the, uh, you know, utilities for the association? So like, how, how do they recoup that? And, you know, would it go through their individual meter or, you know, I guess the commercial won't have to go through some kind of meter for the entire, you know, uh, building or association. So I don't know if you could speak to that, like just sort of like the power requirements and, and um, you know, how, how the, the usage would potentially affect um, the building of the community overall. Yeah. And so th during the feasibility phase, you know, when you're looking into the implementation of electric vehicle chargers, you know, that's when we would look at the load, you know, how much electric load do you have? How much electric load do the individual units have? And, and how do you feed that load? So it, it may be the case uh, outside that the association or building owner would want to go with a commercial grade and they would run off the uh, the, the building's power, um, and you may you may have to upgrade it. You may not have to. Uh, the commercial chargers have uh, load sharing, so they actually communicate with each other. And so, if if uh, you know eight or ten people come home from work and they all plug in at six o'clock, um, that may overload a system. But if you have a load sharing system, then those commercial units um, will talk to each other and make sure make sure that they they do not overload the system that you have. So another sort of um, related, I guess, topic to, to logistics here is, you know, for installation purposes, is, you know, are there, you know, manufacturers who create this equipment who, who have their own installers or do electricians do this? Like, how, how do you, you know, if, if, a, if a building owner or condo or HOA association was interested in sort of pursuing, let's just say, for example, a commercial installation, you know, who, who would they live to? Who would be the, the vendor or service provider to get them sort of uh, point in the right direction. And I guess also they probably need a design professional like yourself. So can you can you speak to that? Yeah, there are, are a lot of companies popping up, a lot of electric vehicle charging companies. And I find a lot of them are are really electricians that are now uh, specializing in, in the electric vehicle charging stations. And, and they get together with manufacturers of different types of chargers. Uh, there, there's essentially sort of, uh, we can say, there's like, uh, you know, Tesla and then everyone else, you know, a lot of people are now producing uh, the universal chargers. And so you can get a company to come in to, to, to look at the incentives for you to check your load and to suggest a, a couple different types of chargers that you may use. One of the things that's happening is if people don't get informed about this and start being proactive, um, in New York, New Jersey, at least you cannot stop someone from installing a charger um, in their dedicated spot. So could you imagine if they, everyone that was installing these installed um, a different type? In, in New York, there's, the, there's, you know, there are a couple of laws passed within the last um, year or two. So in an HOA, and it's the same thing in a condo, a board cannot um, prevent someone from who wants to install a uh, electric vehicle charging station. They can't prevent that, but they can put in reasonable rules and regulations. And I think that's you know, where, um, you know, boards have to be proactive and, and, you know, they probably establish sort of policies rather than doing it like an ad hoc basis every time someone wants to install something. So, you know, to your point, there's some, uh, some uniformity. And then also, I think, you know, related to that, there are some, some safety concerns. So, um, why don't we, we speak to that? We don't want to sound like, um, doomsday people, but what, 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 what are some, some of the issues? Cause it's not, it's a little more intensive 
it's a little more intensive use than just a regular car. So could could you speak to that, Chris? There have been some fires with electric vehicles, and I think you you remember, or you know, anybody who looks online, um, you know, there are, there are um, fires with uh, electric scooters and electric bikes, um, and those lithium ion batteries are the same batteries they they use in in vehicles. Now the vehicle uh, batteries, I think, are higher quality, uh, better regulated, so. Um, you know, less likely there will be a fire, but there have been some. And, and I think we'll all be learning as we implement this, we'll, we'll be learning what happens. And, and so there are ways to, to make it uh, more safe when you install and, and where you decide to let these uh, vehicles, uh, the electric vehicle charging stations uh, be installed. You can separate them out. You can check the fire rating of where it's going to be. You can keep them outside away from the buildings. Um, you know, as you could impl- you could do a master plan where the implementation would be, you know, safer than just letting it go wherever it wants to go. Chris, Chris, does your firm sort of do studies or, or sort of guide associations or a building owner if they, you know, we're sort of interested in the, in doing this kind of installation? Is that something that that your firm could help? Yeah, so we do feasibility study. We call it feasibility studies. It's really the planning and how how uh, how a building owner wants to implement it. You know, we can help do a survey of the owners. You know, which owners. Uh, have them, which ones want to buy electric vehicles uh, in the future. And then you could get an idea of the number you need to implement. Um, We help check local laws, uh, the incentives and rebates you may be able to get. Uh, We help pick the type of charger so that you can select one, just like you might select shutters on a building or a light post. You want all them to be the same. You can pick a charger that you want to be the same. Um, we can help find vendors, um, and, and then somebody like you would have to come change the governing document. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's it's. It, I think I think it sounds. You know, obviously, it, it's it's here, it's coming, um, it, it's here to stay. There are a lot of issues here that um, building owners and you know board members and property managers you know need to be aware of. Uh, getting professionals involved, I think, at, at the uh, you know early stages and sort of having a a long-term plan, I think, is better than sort of just doing it, you know, piecemeal because these demands are going to come up. So maybe you know, boards and, and building owners want to want to get it sort of ahead of the curve. And uh, I know I've learned a lot in our short conversation uh, today. I'm sure all our viewers and listeners out there have as well. So um, I'd like to thank you, Chris. And if you could just let our viewers and listeners know um, where can they reach you? Uh, thanks for having me, Steve, and uh, uh, archforensic.com. You can reach me or cling, C-L-I-N-G, at artforensic.com is my email. Great. All right, Chris. Thanks so much. Be well. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And remember to make every day great.